Greetings, epic adventure seekers. I'm Allie Beerman, your guide to demystifying your world. Our guest today, Ann Gordon, will truly take you on an adventure befitting an epic adventure seeker. Before diving in, okay, as you'll see that, that that's a pun, you know. I'm a New Yorker. That's what we do. We make puns. So before diving in, I have an announcement, a special announcement for you. I, you know that I like to introduce different kinds of shows within our podcast. And today when I was meditating, the universe said, invite your listeners to be a guest with you. And I thought, yeah, that's really cool. So, you know, we're on every podcast player there is across the world. We're on iHeartRadio, Audible, Amazon. And you can be my guest. There'll be a link to contact me in the show notes. We'll connect and we'll see how it fits. And we will make it happen because I think that would be really, really cool. I want to hear from you directly. Now, I feel super excited by the possibilities that I know I attract, which is you. Now, Ann Gordon spent her entire life in the presence of dolphins and whales. She grew up watching orca whales while boating in the Pacific Southwest, which if you've never been there, that's a beautiful place to grow up. She's been running her successful whale and dolphin wisdom retreats internationally since 2007. She shares the wisdom, the wisdom of the dolphins and whales through transformational retreats in Bimini, Hawaii, Mexico, French Polynesia. You know, she goes there to spend time with, to deepen your spiritual connection with the natural world. She's a certified dolphin energy healing practitioner, and she loves to share the powerful healing energy, the insights, the wisdom, and the messages that the dolphins have for her clients. The dolphins and whales are powerful presence in her life, bringing her peace, confidence, and a strong sense of unity and community at all times. Now, I know you're going to feel her very special energy instantly as I welcome you to the show, Ann Gordon. Thank you, Allie. It's really a pleasure and an honor to be here, and I'm excited to share the the energy of the dolphins and whales with all of the listeners. Oh, me too. I can hardly wait because I don't know anything about any of this. I I love your energy. And I got to tell you, after spending that time with a presentation you did about how to do these retreats, I'm all smiles. And you will be too. You'll be sure you stay tuned to Uh Now, as someone who communicates with animals and plants, especially trees, I totally get your relationship with dolphins and whales. Could you tell us how you discovered that very special connection? Well, I think it goes way back to when I was a kid. And as you read in my bio, the uh, that, you know, I spent time out on the family boat watching the orca whales as a kid. And their presence always felt like like this loving, protective older brother was there with me. So I always felt very safe and very loved when in the presence of the orcas. But it took a long time for me to start developing the, you know, the communication and studying dolphin energy healing and learning to meditate and opening up spiritually. But Uh, But I had always had dreams, I still do, where I would be swimming with dolphins and whales and I could be underwater forever and, you know, have conversations with them and ride them and touch them and, you know, swim and play with them. So they've literally always been this magical presence in my life. And then as I opened up to my spiritual self, 
which, you know, was in the late nineties that I then started receiving, having them show up in my meditations and having them share their wisdom and their messages and their guidance with me. So, but they've always been there for me. So I know you said they were dreams, but I'm going to throw something out there. People think of it anyway. Maybe you were just in a, a different dimension or in a different universe, and maybe they weren't really dreams at all. It's very possible. It's very possible. I I will not say that they weren't. I don't know. They felt they you know they were very dreamlike. They came at nighttime, so who knows? But I've also had some extremely powerful meditations with them, and they have taken me as well as my clients when I do dolphin energy healing sessions. There is a planet that I don't know the name of it, but. I just call it kind of dolphin whale school planet where they have, I see it very clearly in my mind's eye where we got, we can go and they teach us this powerful wisdom. And it's, I've never actually remembered the lessons when I go there, but I can see very clearly this planet and what it's like. It's basically like old Greek Roman type, um, amphitheaters that go down like this white marble steps that go down that we're all sitting in and then the stage is not a stage it's a pool that's connected to the ocean and the dolphins or whales whoever is teaching that day comes in and gives us a lesson so and what they've recently shared with me is that the time is now to bring that wisdom here to the earth so I'm looking forward to what that means. Oh, I'm not at all surprised. It's like, how do you, uh, I don't hear voices, but trees and plants, they communicate with me very clearly. And it's mm -hmm. more a feeling. How do you experience it? I'm more clairvoyant where I actually will see powerful visions and images so when I'm meditating or when I'm giving a dolphin energy healing session, I don't feel energy at all. I cannot physically see auras or energy or any of that. But what does happen for me is I can close my eyes and it's like watching a movie. They, I will see absolutely everything that's happening and vivid colors and then sometimes I will hear words as well, or they will implant words into my, into my life. So, you know, into my mind so that I know exactly what they're trying to convey. So I never heard of dolphin energy healing. What, how, how does that work? Sure. And the people find you, I can't imagine knowing the look for that on the internet. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, I do have a website for that. It's called dolphinhealing.net. So you can find me there. Or if you just search dolphin energy healing, uh, my website usually does come up. And so I was trained in it. And basically dolphins, it's been well documented that people have had spontaneous physical healings in the presence of dolphins as well as people that are clinically depressed after just one swim with wild dolphins, they come out functional. And there was a medical doctor in the UK that was studying that and has many documented cases of that. So basically what that is, is that I tap into the dolphins on a spiritual connection energetic connection and just like any other energetic form of healing such as reiki etc that i then become the conduit or the channel for their powerful healing energy and then i send it on to my clients and i actually had a client this morning a, a dolphin healing client who told me that i didn't even know what was going on with her and usually, and I don't need to know because I'm just the channel. I'm not, I'm not the, 
you know, I'm not the one actually doing the healing. And she told me that she had some major thyroid issues and her levels were all off. And she recently went back to the doctor and they said, your levels are normal. What had you do? She says, nothing. And she wasn't about to tell them she had a dolphin energy <laughs> healing session. <laughs> and then she said, and they said, are you taking your meds? And they said, she said, no, not since last October. <laughs> and, she, and then she said, it's because I've been having sessions with you that this has all changed. And I'm like, amazing. I hear stories like that all the time. Well, you shared that because I need your help. I didn't know any of this stuff. Wow. Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah, it, it's oh, beautiful. The, the dolphin energy healing can be for physical challenges, emotional, mental, spiritual, or just for whatever insight and guidance into whatever is for your highest good. And I work just with energy and I do the same thing. I don't want people to give me a list of what's wrong. Right. We put the energy in and it knows what to do. Exactly. Totally. Did I uh, know I no, I, I love science, so I read all kinds of things. So I've known for a long time that dolphins are really wise, and I think they might even be smarter than I believe plants are smarter than we are, to tell you the truth. Yep. Um, but how? Do, what's your experience with the whales? Is there a whale healing energy too? Oh, sure there is. Um, and for me, when I start tuning in, it's who, whoever shows up, shows up is who needs to show up. And so sometimes whales will show up, you know, sometimes other animals will show up as well. I've had manatees show up. I've had sea turtles show up. It's whosoever wisdom is needed at the time. But the whales are actually known to be the holders of the Akashic records on earth. Whoa. So they are the wisdom keepers here on earth for all of us. So to me, I mean, dolphins are usually the doorway because everybody loves dolphins. Everybody can relate to a dolphin. I mean, they have that permanent smile on their face. They're, they're about the same size as humans. They can make eye contact with you. But a whale for many people is a little bit harder to relate to because they're the size of a school bus or bigger. And, you know, they're just these huge beings out there. But really, to me, the dolphins were kind of like college level education, wow. but the whales are graduate school. Whoa. Yeah. I want to know if you've written a book or more than one book yet, because I want it. <laughs> I do have a book and I do have a new uh, card deck out that I call Wisdom from the Sea. And the book will be the same. It's not quite published yet. The card decks are on pre-order right now. So yes, absolutely. Wow. I, I like to learn new things, especially things that I never heard of. That they're the keepers of the Akashic Records. Mm -hmm. oh, I never heard that one before. Yeah. When um, my kids were really little, preschool, we went on a whaling trip cruise whatever they called it off the coast of providence rhode island it was mm -hmm. a very small boat we saw 13 whales that day nice and four different species and wow. one of them came right it was a really little boat <laughs> my kids were really little and it swam under the boat and because <laughs> the boat was little and it wasn't a huge whale but it rocked the boat this terrified my daughter oh but then it came up right next to the boat. Like you could reach down and pet it, open its mouth. It didn't have teeth. It had like a sieve in there. And it was like scooping up plankton. And I thought that was the coolest thing. That was such a gift for all of us to witness. Yeah, it's an amazing gift. You had a really mag magical experience. And on one of my retreats that I run every year is to Baja in Mexico, where we hang out with the gray whales. And what's amazing is that the gray whales uh, were known by the whalers, the people who hunted them as the devil fish, 
because they were the only species of whale that actually fought back against the hunters. Wow. And most other species would just try and swim away, flee. But now they are known as the friendliest whales on earth because they're the only whales and literally the only species of wild animal of any kind to approach human beings to be touched. Whoa, how big are they? They're about 40 feet long and up to 50 feet. And they come right up to the boat very gently. And here's the amazing part is that they not only come up, but this is in, they do this where they give birth and they bring their newborn babies and literally push them up so that you can love on them. And the babies will open their mouth and what that sieve is called baleen plates that they literally filter out the plankton and the krill and the small, small little creatures that they eat. And, but some of the whales, gray whales in these lagoons are old enough to remember the whaling, the hunting Wow. Yet, and they represent forgiveness because they have forgiven the human race for all of the atrocities we as a species have committed against them. And if a whale can forgive you and bring its newborn baby so that you can love on it and trust you enough with its most prized possession, how can we not forgive ourselves? Wow, it's just one more way that I'm seeing humans aren't the most advanced species on our planet. Not by a long shot, in my opinion. <laughs> Not at all. In my opinion, either. It's like, oh, my gosh. So uh, I think they, um, they look us at us. This is what they've told me, is that they look at us, because they've been on this planet for 20, 30 million years. We've been here for a lot less. And they look at us like we would look at a two-year-old or a three-year-old, a toddler. Because we've been on this planet a very short time and we're bumbling along, making a whole lot of mistakes. But they don't hold it against us. Just like you don't hold it against a two-year-old when it, he or she makes a mistake. Because we know they just don't have the information yet. They're still learning. And so that's how the whales and dolphins look at us. And they hold the vision for all of us to grow into the place of harmony and grace that they are in. Wow. I, I want to ask you some more about that. First, I'm going to take a quick sponsor break. Sure. Today's episode is brought to you by Audible. I love Audible, but you've heard me talk about it before. I go to sleep at night listening to audiobooks. I play books during the day while I'm doing things. I took a course on the history of Western philosophy taught by university professors. It came with a 795 page PDF of all the lectures. I love Audible and they have something special for you today. They're offering you a 30 day free trial. You can download the audiobook of your choice. You have 30 days to look around. And man, there's a lot to look around and see and enjoy. And at the end of 30 days, you can, and I know they have more than one level now. When I joined, there was one level. You can join. Or if it's not for you, you still get to keep the book and just cancel. So to get your free trial, you go to audibletrial.com forward slash A-L-I-T-L-C. The link will be in the show notes. And I want to get back to, I'm just, I just want to sit here with my mouth open, like, because I didn't know any of this. And it's making sense to me. Mm, nice. So how do people know to look for you? Because if I hadn't been a certain group, I never would have been aware. Yeah, it's, it's one of those things that I guess if you were interested in dolphins and whales and maybe interested in swimming with dolphins or hanging out with whales, you might stumble across my website and then see that my retreats are all about the spiritual aspect and what we can learn from them. 
but then there are some books out there, but it is kind of a real small little uh, niche out there in the world that, the, you know, the spiritual aspect of the dolphins and whales, but they really are amazing models for us humans. And they really are also the masters of consciousness and they're not as physically attached to their physical bodies. They can shift dimensions at will. They are like one of the, my favorite things about dolphins is transparency. So for example, uh, you may have heard that dolphins have echolocation or also known as sonar. And this echolocation, they can see in low light conditions or when the, at night in the ocean, when there's no lights or in murky waters, and they can find food, they can find fish, they can also avoid danger, coral reefs, rocks, boats, sharks. But not only can they see in no light with their echolocation, they can actually see inside the bodies of the fish to see if one of those fish has broken bones or a disease making it easier to catch. Oh. They can see inside each other's bodies or even our human body to see if there is an, an illness or a fetus. They know when you're pregnant. And sometimes they've, there's actually been trainers working with dolphins that the dolphins indicated there was a pregnancy before the woman even knew she was pregnant. Mm -hmm. And they also, here's the next level of it. Not only can they see the physical state of the body, they can see the emotional state. Because if you think about it, when we are angry, when we are sad, we hold our body differently than when we're relaxed and happy and they can see that. So what that means is in the world of dolphins, there is no such thing as a secret or a lie. Wow. And imagine, I know that's kind of scary for us humans because we all feel like <laughs> if they knew this about me, they wouldn't really love me. Right. But just, but when you take it a step further, think about the freedom of not having to hide anything from anybody. And imagine what a beautiful world that would be if we were living in complete transparency like the dolphins. Wow. It's, uh, the dolphins have like families, like pods or what? They what? have families and they have extended families in their pods. Yes, they live in these pods. Like in with the orca whales, which are actually the largest members of the dolphin family, they never leave, like the, the males never leave their mother their entire lives. They live, they're matrilineal and they live with their mothers forever. So family, and in the world of dolphins, family and pod, that's why we say unity community is first and foremost. And the beauty is, is that in community, what's good for the pod is good for everyone, but without sacrificing your own uniqueness. Wow. Your uniqueness is valued and honored and respected. It's not that you have to conform to everybody else. It's that all the unique parts make this beautiful whole. Just thinking, how do we get them in the Congress and the White House? <laughs> <laughs> well, we, they, we can learn from them so that the more we emulate them, the hopefully the softer, more gentler, the more respectful our world will become. So I, I know on the presentation I went to that you did, mm -hmm. it said you do four to seven retreats a year. In how a normal non-COVID year, yes. <laughs> yeah. So how many people are in an average size retreat? I like to have my retreats about 12 to 15 people on average. There's one I do where we have 20 and then there's others I do where we just have like eight or 10. 
but they're they're always lovely groups and amazing magical experiences so i leave everything happens perfectly the people usually come and don't know the others at least not beforehand in their awareness yeah absolutely i mean many of the people who book my retreats i don't even know them beforehand they just you know sign up on my website and and they're there so but it does it really does become this beautiful family very connected unit where people feel like i always feel like i'm on getting a paid vacation with these amazing people who become very dear friends afterwards wow that's and when you think about it i come from mainstream psychology and virginia satir who originated family therapy she said you need four hugs a day just to survive mm. eight to get by and 12 to thrive and i'm thinking a group like that with all that kind of energy there must be a whole lot of touching and hugging going on. there is there is because dolphins are always touching each other they're very very tactile for sure yeah absolutely in fact Dolphins are one of the few species besides humans that make love for the connection of it. In fact, in dolphins and in orcas, they will have sex with brothers, sisters, mothers, sons, etc. And it's not about incest. It's all about deepening the bonds. Oh. And what they have found is that the females actually are conscious conceivers. So what that means is they consciously know when to drop the eggs because if they're having sex with their brother to have a connection, they don't want to have a baby with their brother. So they won't drop the egg. But when they do choose a mate to be the father of their baby, that's when they'll drop that egg. That's so interesting. I live in the country and this time of year, everybody is, all the different animals are mating. And then yep. I watched two flies on my deck and they were just still, it had to be a half an hour. It's like, that's not fair because the male's always bigger and he just pinned somebody down. <laughs> and watching the female scurry about and try to get away. <laughs> The dolphins sound like they're in a different class. I mean, they they can, there can be some, what appears to be to us humans is a bit of rough play. But what we don't know is, is that part of the game, right? And I know that whales, humpback whales will do this thing where we'll get a, they'll get a bachelor group of males and they will chase a female. And they may chase her all day long. And the males are pushing and shoving and fighting each other for the attention of the female. But the fun part is the female makes the choice. It's not about which male is stronger. It's which one she wants out of that group. And it's a game for them. It is not about really trying to hurt anybody. It's like, you know, it's like a bunch of guys having football, a football game on a Saturday afternoon, just because it's, they like the rough and tumble fun of it. It's like, I, I can relate a story. I, I have a lot of wild turkeys here. Mm -hmm. and there's this one female. It was just like you were just saying, the females are in control. And these four males, they were puffing out their chest and opening their tail feathers and pursuing her, but keeping their distance. I, I don't know who she wound up with, or if any of them, but it was... <laughs> In fact, I've seen that with a pair of ducks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. They have, they have their games and they have their little shows and rituals and it's all part of it. So it's fun. I once had, we had a group of animal communicators out and we were watching uh, one of these bachelor groups chasing a female. And I asked the animal communicator to tune in. And so we all tuned in. And really what I, what the impression I got was even though all the males were fighting each other at that moment, she already had made her decision. 
And she'd already made eye contact with that male, but she enjoyed all this attention around her of these males, you know, showing off for her. Wow. So I, I, I was just thinking about probably the first time I ever saw an orca whale or the dolphins was a place like SeaWorld. Mm -hmm. So what do you feel about that? Do the dolphins and the whales in there, um, have you ever heard them communicating or felt anything from them? Sure. And there, obviously there is a lot of controversy about that. Many people think it's, you know, it's horrible and, and others love it. So, and I'm kind of in the middle. I see both sides of it. I actually, not only do I have the, you know, the spiritual aspect of the dolphins and whales, but I have a degree in biology and animal behavior as well oh. from university. So I, I can see it from the scientific side as well as the spiritual side, but it really, this, there was many, many years ago, I was, I went to SeaWorld and I was standing in front of the underwater viewing of the orcas. And one of the orcas kind of came up to me and I got this spontaneous, I wasn't even trying to communicate with her. And I had this spontaneous message come through from her saying, we chose to be here. Okay. We chose to be ambassadors for our species. But she also said, yet we didn't know how hard it would be. Oh, wow. So it is a challenge to be in human care because some of the facilities are not that great. And there's no way you can duplicate the open ocean in a pool. It's just not possible. Um, but I've also been to facilities where they just fence off part of a bay or a harbor and, you know, let the dolphins swim there and they're they like that better because there's you know they they can hear the rest of the ocean and it's much more natural but they do they can reach a whole lot more people because not everybody's going to go out on a whale and dolphin wisdom retreat not mm -hmm. everybody's even going to go whale watching like you did they're going to meet they're going to reach out to a lot more people than they could mm -hmm. now in my vision, in a perfect world, there won't, we won't need those kinds of facilities anymore. But we're not at that place yet. We're working towards it, we're moving towards it, we're going the right direction, but we're still not quite there. So when you're having the retreat and you swim with dolphins and whales, uh, are mm -hmm. they inviting you in or how's that work? Yeah, I, my retreats are all with wild dolphins and whales out in the ocean. Mm -hmm. So it's completely 100% the decision and choice of those dolphins and whales to be with us humans. There is no trainer giving them fish to be with us. We're not using food. In fact, when we do dolphin or whale swims, we observe them from the boat first. And we let them come to the boat. We don't chase them down. We go, we see them and we go near them, but we don't then try and force the encounter. We let them come to the boat. They hang out with a boat. I've even had them, dolphins come right into the boat, towards the boat, and then go parallel, literally in front of the boat, like almost to say, stop, it's coming here, come play with us. And then they go to the back of the boat and wait for us to get in. It's been that obvious sometimes. Wow. So, and I've been swimming with humpback whales where we had, I've had times where they, we just get a fleeting glimpse and off they go. And then I've had other times where a mother will just with her calf in tow, will literally swim circles around us. Like she swam five circles around our little group of, humans bobbing about in the water and she could have been anywhere in the ocean but she chose to hang out with us and that's and it means so much more when a wild animal chooses to interact have eye contact and connect with you yeah i was thinking when i was in hawaii many years ago and we went out on a small boat the dolphins just came and they were swimming yes. alongside us. 
Yeah, exactly. They love to ride the waves, the bow waves of a boat and interact. And you'll see them all the time turning and looking up at you. It's wonderful. I think the most extraordinary thing ever was um, where we saw those whales. And I don't know what you call it when they jump out. And I'm thinking, they're right. so big. There's so much weight. How do they do that? It's amazing. That's called breach. When they breach, I've seen humpback whales, when you watch them underwater, literally just five flips of their tail and 50 tons of whale is out of the water. Wow. You would think they need a big, long run at it, but no, <laughs> not at all. They're extremely strong. Wow. I, I have a pond on our, our property and it's not that big a pond, but man, there's some really big fish in there. And then new species appeared. I don't know where they came from. Yeah, when you were saying before, when the dolphins could see or the whales could see inside, you mm -hmm. could see inside these little fish. Oh, interesting. And, and they're jumping all the time. I'm sure they're jumping to get flies. Mm -hmm. like yep. yep. But I just want to what you just described, I don't know how they do that. They're so strong and they can go like birds. How do birds fly that fast and they don't right. get hurt? And the fish do the same thing. Mm -hmm. They're built perfectly for what they need to be. And, and you know, it's really amazing because we had ice on that pond for four months last winter and they were all still alive. I just mm -hmm. didn't know if they were going to make it through. And now it's so, it can be so hot. I figure that water must be boiling hot, but they can adapt to anything. They do. Yeah, it's amazing. Wow. Well, I'll tell you, this has been a real adventure for me. I don't know how long I'll be able to wait to be able to go on a retreat with you because it's um, <laughs> like something I would love. Yeah, you would. It's it's a magical experience. It really is to be eye to eye, you know, inches from a dolphin or a whale. It's incredible. I imagine that it would be. So oh, I know that you said you have a gift for our listeners. I do. If you would like to, and I'm going to use the same pun, dive deeper into connection with the dolphins. I have a free gift, which is a guided meditation that I have led for you to meet your own personal dolphin spirit guide. Wow. And we, you all have one if you want one. And so this will help you to meet your dolphin spirit guide, open this connection observe them, get to know them, have a magical experience with them. And after you meet them, then you can take this relationship anywhere you want. You can invite them into your dreams, into your future meditations, and know that they are always there, just like the angels. They're there. And you can ask for guidance, for insights, for help, for healing from your dolphin spirit guide at any time. Well, I can't wait to get that myself because I I don't usually like to do guided meditations. I was doing one with, um, I do Qigong, so they were like Qigong masters, and it's like, this isn't working for me anymore. So after what I learned today about dolphins, I'm definitely going to be using that. So thank nice. you for that. What's the best way for people to get in touch with you? Yeah, well, they can get the free gift at dolphinspiritguide.com. It's super easy. And I'm sure you'll have the link in the show notes as well. And my website is whalewisdomretreats with an S.com. And there's a contact page there. You can just send me an email, send me a message, reach out to me. I'd love to hear from you. And, and one thing I, I didn't mention if you're looking for a way, to get a paid vacation in beautiful yes. places. And we'll be glad to teach you and coach you on how to do that, make a real business out of it. Yeah, if you are a spiritual teacher, a healer, an animal communicator, a life or business coach of some sort, if you have a business, if you have an audience and you would like to, again, dive deep into connection with your clients, give them a powerful uh, retreat, 
And you said you were, your background is in psychology. I like to say that on a retreat, and I've observed this, that your clients can have powerful breakthroughs, life-changing breakthroughs without a traumatic breakdown. So it's a really amazing experience. Yeah, oh, I don't do mainstream psychology. I mean, I'm, yes. Well, <laughs> yeah, so that's that was a surprise that I'll bet you guys out there listening didn't see coming. So I want to thank you, thank you, thank you for everything you shared today, for doing the work that you do. Are there other people who do it, what you do? There are. There's a few of us out there in the world. Not There's not a lot, but there's a few, yes. Well, I thank you, and all the links will be in the show notes. And I want to remind everybody to look in the show notes and contact me for a chance to be a guest on a show and also take advantage of Audible special trial. Join our Facebook group, ask questions, make a friend, see special offers, and visit our show website. Remember, enjoy every moment because nothing's happening out there. Everything happens within. You don't see out there, you see it within. You hear, touch, taste, smell, all within. And I will see you here next time.